Hi, my name is Tal, a sales application engineer at Munters. In this video, we are going to learn a couple of important points about the communicator. First, we will discuss the importance and how to maintain the battery backup. And then we will troubleshoot some communication issues. So let's get started. Your communicator is the key to knowing what is going on in your farm. It has to be online 24-7. The communicator is equipped with a battery backup, which is very important. When there is a total power failure and generators did not kick in, the battery backup will enable the communicator to send text messages or phone calls to the manager, alerting that the power is down. A functioning battery can send alarms for about three to four hours. In order to test the battery and the battery charger, navigate to System menu, then Test and Battery. This menu will show you the amount of battery life left and whether or not the charger is active. A faulty charger will also trigger an alarm in the communicator. However, this test is not enough and we must make sure periodically that the battery has enough power to do the job when the power dies. To do this, Unplug the power to the communicator and wait for the text message or phone call to come in. This will give you a 100% proof that the battery works properly. We recommend you to run this test once a month, so be sure to add that to your checklist. We also recommend replacing the battery once a year regardless of the test results. When the communicator doesn't pick up the controllers, we first must start with the basics. So let's navigate to Installation menu and then Communication on each of the controllers and make sure that each house has its own unique number. In that same menu, make sure that the baud rate in each controller matches the one in the communicator. The baud rate usually appears in the Installation menu of any controller. In SuperGuard, go to Room 0 Setup menu. To view the baud rate of the communicator, go to System, Advanced Setup, and then RF Wired Network. The next thing would be to check the wiring. Are the communication ports wired properly? When using 232 communication, make sure that the wiring between the communicator or MUX and the first house is crossed, TX to RX and RX to TX. Have a look at the installation manual for more details. Let's start with a simple truth. RF communication can be tricky. When using RF units or R-Link 1s, there can be a number of reasons for lack of communication. If none of the houses are picked up, this means that there is a general problem and is probably originated in the central office RF unit, which is connected to the communicator or MUX. If this is the case, Please refer to our R-Link 1 video or manual and make sure you have performed all the steps required to set up the R-Link 1 correctly and connect the R-Link 1 unit to the communicator. One other thing to check is inside the R-Link 1. There is a potentiometer which defines the channel. This was designed to avoid mixed signals between closed farms. Double check and make sure your channels are the same throughout the farm. After that, check mode, power level, and communication protocol dip switches. All these are detailed in the R-Link 1 video and manual. If only one or two houses are not communicating or have bad communication, this usually means that there is a line of sight problem or high voltage interference. So make sure that R-Link 1s have a clear line of sight and they are not installed behind metal poles. Also make sure that there are no high voltage lines between the two points. Please refer to our R-Link 1 video or manual for more elaborate installation tips. The first thing to remember is to install the USB driver on the PC before connecting the communicator to the PC. The USB driver can be installed either from a CD which you get with the communicator or download from our website. After installing the driver, connect the communicator and open the PC software. 
Then go to Setup and select Network Setup. In this window, you should see Communicator next to the COM port. One other critical parameter is the baud rate, which is the speed of communication between the communicator and the PC and must match on both sides. In the communicator, go to System, Advanced Setup, and then COM slash USB and define the right speed. On the PC side, open Rodemnet and then Setup and check the baud rate. We usually work at 9600 beats per second except for SuperGuard that runs with 4,800 bits per second. That's it for today. We hope you learned something and uh, make sure you tune in for more videos.